reports an unidentified object over the launch sector. All planes should have been out of that area 20 minutes ago. Identified. Transcom flight number 12 straight off course. Will that hold us to launch? No, he'll be clear before the shoot. Three minutes. 30 seconds. Better be clear. That little baby cost us 50 million bucks. Be just great if she sideswiped an airliner with the stuff she's got inside. Three minutes. Control power on. We'll pick her up right at the first orbit and activate all sensors. If the laser communication link activates on second orbit, we're in. You know, it's strange. After all this time and money and work, the laser satellite is finally ready to go. Time. They're in the terminal position. Our scanners are locked on. We're ready to assume control any time after third stage burnout. Good. I can't see anyone now. Does she have to call off this one? We're committed. We can't abort. You know how many times I've advised the government against this particular shoot. I said it when I headed up the experimental missile program, and it's in every one of my papers on the subject. You've had a remarkable career, Keith. Every scholastic honor and degree. We need you here. And I'm sorry for what's happened between you and the powers that be, but I just The can't... world is full of bads. Look, besides being a friend of mine, I also have a great deal of respect for you. But you haven't convinced anyone that this particular project is a menace to the safety of the world. What happened to the first secret laser communication satellite? The small one that exploded in its own orbit. Anyone know why? No, wrong. I do. It was a warning. A warning from the other planets to keep the Earth in its place. To keep us incommunicado until we're further advanced. I predicted that fully three years before the satellite was launched. And you know there's no proof of any other life on those planets. But I'm telling you this. Alien intelligence watches us constantly. They don't feel we're ready to join in the great brotherhood of the countless galaxies. They'll do something, anything, to keep us from communicating. I'm here to ask you to beg you to save your world. For your generation, yes. Martha, that dinner was delicious. Did you bake the pie yourself? Oh, sure. An old family recipe my grandmother sold of a bakery. Keith, you want some more coffee? Half a cup, hon. Keith, you're acting rather smug. You look like a man who's just inherited a major portion of the world. You might not be so far wrong, uh, in a way of speaking. Keith. Yes, dear? I know. 
I'll bet you finally decided that there was nothing to worry about with the laser satellite. Hardly. It's still of great interest to me. Among other things. Well, it's been up there three months now, with no dire effects. 20 feet in diameter, in high orbit, traveling around the Earth at about 18,000 miles an hour. But can't you two talk about anything else? I'm tired of hearing about laser satellites and isotopes and conical graduations and all the rest. Maybe you have something in your space technology I can use for a headache, hmm? Keith, you're hinting at something. What is it? I can't tell you right now. Uh, she thinks I'm off my rocker. Everyone thinks you're off your rocker. Even me. Now, come on. What's the big secret? Well, Keith. I... Honey, this is too big. I've got to tell someone. But you promised. Kurt will understand. Maybe nobody else on Earth, but Kurt will understand that. Well, I'll try. Come on into the den. Don't let it get you down, Martha. That's a powerful looking set. I've never seen anything like it before. Where'd you get it? Come on, I'll help you clear the table. It'll be just a second. I got a second. There it is. Do you have any idea of what it is? What you're actually hearing? Some kind of progressive jazz? It's Venus. By laser communication without a satellite. Oh, come on, have a peek. Venus, I don't mean the static. Can't you hear it? The other thing? What other thing? Listen to it, Kurt. Listen to the voice. Oh, stop it, Keith. If it is a voice, it's unintelligible. Forget it. Kurt, listen to me. I've been in constant communication with him now for over two months. I don't know exactly how I understand, but it's a form of hyperspace hypnotism. I do know that I do understand. All right, Keith, so you've got a little friend on Venus. What does he want from us? Has he got a name? Or is it just an it? Or maybe it's a she. I'm sorry you don't believe me, Kurt. He knows exactly what he wants, and he's about to make a move to get it. And although his name is untranslatable into any known Earth language, it would sound something like Zontar. Hello? Yes, this is Kurt. What? Well, that's impossible. All right, I'll be right over. And nothing wrong at the installation, is there? It's gone. What's gone? Satellite. Simply vanished. Wonderful. So what can we do about it? What is it, Kurt? There's trouble at the installation, honey. We're going to have to leave. Well, good night. I'll get your coat. Good night, Keith. Good night, Kurt. I thought Keith was a little off, but now he's really gone off the deep end. Keith's a genius, all right. Maybe too much so for his own good this time. He did it. Zontar diverted the satellite for a vehicle. He'll soon be here. Zontar will soon be on Earth. Situation the same, Sergeant? Yes, sir.
General ain't so happy tonight. I guess none of them are. Raise the burner on the C-band link. We might just see something. Wells? It's at full visible now. Everything seems to be operating correctly. But there's just nothing there. I don't understand it. Understand it? Of course not. No one understands it. But it's the scientific achievement of the century. We've got to find it. Things will be better soon. Very much better. But you promised. Oh, please, please come out of this. Please come back to me. Seven point six four eight two. Power negative. Maybe a link failed. I'm sorry, Doctor. All right, ladies, we know it wasn't anybody's fault. But be sure and get those reports to Washington tonight by scrambled transmission. Yes, sir. Wait. Look here, Kurt. It's back. It's just reappeared. The data link is operating. It's just as if it were never gone. It's right on orbit, functioning perfectly. Get the Pentagon on the hotline. Tell them we're bringing the satellite down for a full examination. Yes, sir. Can you handle recovery procedures yourself, John? Oh, yes. It's all programmed on the cycloid computer. All we need to do is activate it. Good. Good night, then. Good night, Doctor. This is Richie. Acknowledge. I receive you. Yes? Yes, it's true. I am your only friend. Nobody else even believes you exist, but they will. They will. It's late, Keith. Are you coming to bed? Santar's on his way, darling. He drew the satellite to Venus, boarded, and returned it to orbit. All within an hour. He's inside that circling laboratory right now, waiting to come down to us, to save us. The greatest day in history is about to dawn. Please come to bed, Keith. You need some sleep, and you need it badly. The, this, you've got to snap out of this fantasy you've built it's up. It's not fantasy. It's what I've been predicting for years. And it's good instead of evil. My one uncertainty is whether it would be for good or for evil. And it's for good. I'm going to stay by the set tonight. I need to be here when Zontar lands. There's still a great deal I don't know about him. Whatever you say, Keith. Good night. Night.
you people positive you know what you're doing? Oh, I think we can manage without wrecking it. This cycloid computer just doesn't make mistakes. What am I worried about? I'm not paying for it. They're ready at the tape, sir. Yes, Mr. Secretary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It'll be done. Well, that's it. All clear. Bring her down. Roger. 30 seconds. Position, 42 north. 58 minutes. Check. 59 minutes. 43 north. Locking and locked. Computer now programming the bird. Fourth cycle entering atmosphere. Too fast. It can't be heavier. What's the matter with that blasted thing? Six cycle. It shouldn't be past four by now. Something wrong? I don't know, General. It's setting its own course. It's almost as if it had a mind of its own. Everything is engaged. It's just abandoning its own orbit. This just can't be happening. Exactly what's going on here? I don't know, General. It's, it's eerie. It's not acting on our control signals. Send it back up. Don't mess around with it. I don't think we can, General. She's setting her own pattern. Or it certainly seems like it. Well, what's going to happen to it? I don't think I want to know. Get Washington again, Alice. Yes, sir. Scramble through on the hotline. Just lost all contact, radar and sensors. Yes, yes, I hear you. Martha? What is it, Julia? Come in here. He's here, darling. Zontar landed the satellite in a cave. <laughs> they couldn't even track him. Keith! The world has been headed downhill for a long time. Wars, larger bombs. But now it will be over. All our dreams for perfection will now be realized. Zontar will see to Keith. that. I've got to phone Kirk. Oh, he must know. No! Please, ask anyone what it is that you're imagining. I'm going insane. Yes, that's right. That cave is in the mountains about six miles from here. As you predicted, it is over a hot spring, which should make it somewhat compatible with your Venus environment. I don't know. I've got plenty of gas. I'll have a look. On Clark Rock stop, too. come over this place. Why has everything gone dead? There's been a massive power failure somewhere. We'll have it fixed in a few minutes. The hotline's dead, General. 
careful, General. There's a half million volts in there. What happened to the satellite? I don't know. It must be down somewhere. I don't understand it. It just couldn't disappear. Gone. Fifty million dollars and a million hours work. I can't find anything wrong. Well, what are we going to do? Keith's house not far from here. We'll have to walk. thing happened. Both my watch and the car clock stopped at five after three. I wonder why. Coincidence. No, I've got a premonition. Oh, don't be foolish. Come on. Yours dead, too? Yes. I don't understand it. What's going on around here? I don't know. No radio, TV, even the wire services are cut. It's like... It's like the town's hanging in midair. Mrs. Ritchie? Yes? Your husband said this thing was going to happen someday. Does he know what's going to happen next? I don't know. I really don't know. Yes. I have the names of the control units in this immediate area. The mayor of Jackson is Sidney Parker. The chief of police is Brad Crenshaw. They're very important for controlling the town. The chief security officer of the installation is General Matt Young. And the head of the laser project is Dr. Kurt Taylor. Along with their wives, that's eight people all that's necessary for complete control of this area. As I understand it, you're now hosting eight control devices. Is this correct? I would like to see one of the injectopods. They actually grow as part of you and then separate on command, don't they? Fantastic. Now I have the general locations of the control units. You can operate by hand, I think. Keep at it. I'll get help. Come on, I've got the car parked at the edge of town. But no cars are running. Ours is. It's not been de-energized. Come on. I don't know, but I don't like it. <gasps> Ugly thing. Obscene looking. I've never seen anything like it. Neither have I. Let's go. We'll never get there standing here. What do you mean our car has not been de-energized? Sontar stopped all power at its source. That means steam, water, electricity, combustion engines, everything. Water? You mean the faucets won't work? That's right. That's ridiculous. I thought 
thought you said it wouldn't work. Of course it works. It belongs to me. Zontar stopped the power selectively. We're not affected. Come on. Keith, our car broke down. Could you run me over to Phil's garage? Well, I'm afraid that wouldn't do you any good. But I will ask you inside for a drink. You look all in. A drink I could use. How did you know the car stopped running? Could have been a broken axle or anything. Could have. It just stopped running like every car did today. Like everything mechanical did. Keith, what's going on? What's all the mystery? Do you know something you're not telling us? Relax. You have time. Time for explanations. Perhaps even time for understanding. <clears throat> you heard anything from the general? No, sir, not since he left for headquarters an hour ago. Did he take the jeep? No, the jeep don't work, so he walked. Funny seeing a general walk, he hardly knows how. <laughs> Things still snaffle inside? Yeah, power's still off. Funny thing, too. The auxiliary has a hand crank, and even that doesn't work. I wonder what effect this power failure has on my wife's big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me know if you hear anything from the general. We're all puzzled, and just a little bit afraid. Yeah, sure. Jimmy. Keith, I'm sorry. I can't believe anything of what you're saying. That doesn't surprise me, nor does it dismay me. <laughs> no one ever believed me. All right, Keith. All right. Let's say just for the moment that what you're saying is true. That a creature called Zontar has come from Venus and has shut down the world's power and is putting the world's population under its domino. Now, if that is true, why aren't you fighting it? 
because this superior intelligence, this Zontar, is working with me. After all, I was his first contact, and I contacted him. I believe he's here to save us from ourselves, not to dominate us, as you have so quickly concluded. Keith, you talk as if this thing were a personal friend of yours. Oh, yes. They're real chums. The days when people made fun of me are over. Uh, he's here to help us save ourselves. From what? From ourselves, Kurt. From ourselves. Oh. I, uh, I didn't know we needed rescuing. Kurt, I'm serious. Remember your theory on free magnetic gravitation? Mm-hmm. What happened to it? It was a great theory. Well, you know, Keith, Washington red tape, I, I couldn't get an appropriation. Kurt, that was sheer stupidity, an example of how arrogance and ignorance restrain man's progress. I should know. I've been victimized by it myself. And uh, Zontar is going to end all this? Yes, quickly, easily. You'll hardly realize it's been done. How's he going to do it? How's Zontar going to pull this off? I can't tell you just yet, Kurt. It's premature for his plan. Premature. But you'll understand everything pretty soon. I don't think so, Keith. I don't think so. Well, I'd have to take a long, cold look at anything that would change the world so completely. Zontar or whatever. Look, Keith, would you run me over to the lab? It's useless going there. The lab is completely inoperative. All right, then will you run us home? Sure. I'll be with you in a minute. I knew Kurt wouldn't panic. Nothing quite like a logical, orderly, scientific mind. He didn't panic because he didn't believe you. Logic makes him think you're insane. Get off my back, Martha. I've overlooked and forgiven your lack of faith for years. But now that events have vindicated me, it's time you stood up to be counted. I'll stand up with you, Keith. Not because of events, but because I love you. Were you in contact? Good. You can trace my car through the energy pulses you supply. That will lead the injector pods to him. He will be most difficult, but his mind is of the utmost value to us. Everything under control, men? Yes, sir, as well as can be expected under the circumstances. I have a top secret fix from Washington. This whole area has been placed under martial law. Mm. I'm in command, and we will proceed immediately to prepare defense measures. Against what? Don't ask questions. This place is to be abandoned. Sergeant, I want you to assemble the entire guard force. Have them ready to move out at 1630 hours. With full equipment, it will be a forced march. Yes, sir. It will be a reconnaissance and holding patrol. You'll take a position south of Sawtooth Ridge and observe the area to the east. Regardless of the circumstances, you are to take no action, but will be required only to send me hourly report by courier. Begging the General's pardon, sir. How are we supposed to know when it's 4.30? All our watches have stopped. Here, take mine. It's started running again. Yes, big news. We're in the midst of a communist uprising of some kind. They've sabotaged every known source of power in the area. Seem to have disrupted all communications. What? How'd they manage to get all power sources at once? Well, I can understand them managing to blow the big electric and water plants, but none of our generators here are working. Don't ask me. I know they did it. Don't know how. How did you get the message? Radio and wires as dead as everything else. Special courier. Managed to slip through from headquarter command. You are all restricted to this building until the emergency is over. Do you mean we're prisoners? 
Let us say you're all under protective custody. They love to get their hands on you with your knowledge of that satellite. Well, there's blankets and canned goods in the closet there. We'll make out. Not comfortably, but we'll do it. I'll see the supplies are sent over. Remember, you're not to go outside that door. We read you, General. We won't move an inch. Well, guess we've got a lease that's hard to break. Well, at least you get a day off. That's the only kind of strange today, honey. I hesitate even to suggest this. But do you think Keith could be right? Anything's possible. But I don't think so. It's that he seemed to know about it. He expected it. Look, Ann, I've known Keith for over 15 years. He has one of those intellects that allows him to make calculated guesses. Now, if you make 10,000 wild guesses, one of them is likely to come true. Well, maybe this one has. I mean, he seems so positive, so confident. Look, Ann. You're letting the loss of power, together with the loss of the satellite, allow you into believing this isn't logical. We'll find a reason for this. For a massive loss of power or some other natural catastrophe. But Keith sees in it some reflection of one of his fantastic ideas. Don't you see? It, it, it vindicates him for a time. I see. Sort of a chance to regain faith. Exactly. Part of it is that Keith really believes this. He, he really thinks he's talking to something from Venus. Something named Zontar. I just got home from dropping them off. If Kurt doesn't stay there, he may try and get to the installation. I see. It will take you 12 more hours to grow eight control devices. That's unfortunate. We could use them quicker than that. But once we get Kurt, we can hold off investigation for that length of time. The President of the United States has great faith in him. And if you can control a hotline call from Kurt to the President, we can stall for that length of time. What are my instructions? Remain here in contact until Jackson is evacuated. Will be done. What's happening? Where are they going? Stay here and stay right here. I saw a funny looking boy. Uh. And, and. Kurt, what is it? 
Where are you going? Darling, I've got to go up to the installation. Oh, Kurt, no. And look, I've got to find out what's going on. Now, look, you stay inside. And remember to keep all the windows and doors locked. Oh, Kurt, I'm afraid something terrible will happen. Please don't go. Kurt? about the only one left, Mr. Ledford. I guess so. Don't be difficult, editor. What's that gun for, Brad? That's not like you. But gun or no gun, here I stay. I helped build this town. My paper got your job for you. What's the matter with you, Brad? We don't need papers anymore. They're useless. Get moving. Sorry, I don't understand a word you're saying, but I'll not go. I'm an old man, and here I stay. Brad, I've been looking for you, Doctor. I just saw you kill a friend in cold blood. Why? Orders, Doctor. Orders. Orders? Orders from whom? Zontar, of course. I'll have to place you in protective custody. Why don't you shoot me? You're to be one of us. You're free to go. You can't escape. What have you been doing now? Zontar finally told me about the biostructure of the control devices, the injectopods. They're part of him. He detaches them and they fly to the persons wanted like birds. I was trying to spot one. How do they... How do they gain control of the victim? <laughs> there are no victims, darling. According to Zontar, they carry with them an electrobiological essence of himself, the host. They plant this activated growth in the person's neck after which he's controlled by the host. It's a little like radio, except that it's biological, too. That is, the person actually becomes a living extension of Zontar, actually becomes part of Zontar. After the growth is planted, the injectopods die. And the people? They don't die, do they, Keith? 
No. No? Only their minds. Their personalities and their identities. Their minds are clearer than they ever thought possible. All the human waste is gone. The greed, the bitterness, all the foolish nonsense. But the feet, all emotions. Yeah. The emotions are gone. Why are you holding me? Why do you put your arms around me and pull me to you? Why? Because I love you. You know that. I don't know why you should, from what you say. Wouldn't Zontai say love is a waste? It's an emotion, you know. Oh, Pete, you can be so smart, and, and yet you can be so unthinking. You take away a man's dreams and emotions, and all you have left is death. A living death. Emotions are the soul of people. I'm not making the rules. It has to be the way it has to be. believe in signs, Dr. Taylor? Oh, General Young, you startled me. Sorry, didn't mean to. Why is the installation shut down? Where did everybody go? They've all been transported to the district air base. No telling what might happen to them here. Oh, Dr. Taylor, may I offer you a ride back into Jackson? Rather a long bike trip. You certainly may, General. Thank you very much. Here, let me put this in the back. What a relief. This is awfully nice of you, General. General Young, how come your Jeep is running? It's one of the new experimental models. Oh, Dr. Taylor, I think it would be best if you and Mrs. Taylor were to join your employees at the base. Could be. Is there any way I can get in touch with them? Not a chance. They're under protective custody. General Young, let me move that rock before we get started. Huh? What rock? I believe you now. And I also believe you're an accessory to murder. That's a nice way to greet an old friend. Sit down, Kurt. You're upset. Yes. I helped Zontar. I told him everything that would make it possible for him to come here. Your satellite was the final link in the chain. Zontar is a member of a race that was born too soon. They developed a culture on Venus that Earth won't catch up to in perhaps a million years. And then disaster struck. You see, Kurt, they're uh, host beings. They grow devices that enable them to control other creatures. Somehow the creatures they controlled on Venus became sterile and died out. Without the control creatures, Zontar's dominant race slowly withered away. And you mean to tell me that these creatures are going to control the human race so it will die out too? Zontar has an intellect that dwarfs humans. Makes us look like so many ants by comparison. And you think we need him? We always have. Listen. In the last 12 hours, men have been murdered for failing to obey this new master. Makes you think a little, doesn't it? Yes. It makes me look back into history for a comparison. Comparison? Why, you can't compare this to anything that's ever happened. Yes, I can. Every great change on Earth has been the result of torment, chaos, and death. Plagues have brought about wondrous cures. Wars have brought about vast plains, atomic power, radiological medicine. Our own discoveries. Now, Pete, 
You're talking about changes that were brought about by man himself. But Zontar isn't human, so your argument just doesn't hold water. Incidentally, revolutions, plagues, and wars have also resulted in a number of regressions. What about the Dark Ages? No, no, you're not very convincing. You'll be convinced, Kurt. He wants you on his side. And you actually think that I condone this reign of terror? That I'll swear allegiance to this Zontar? Well, I won't. I'll fight him, and I'll fight you, too. You're a traitor, Keith. The most diabolical traitor of all time. Despite all our fights and disagreements, he was still my best friend. Is that all you can think of, losing a friend? What about losing yourself? Wouldn't his words mean anything to you? If you weren't so blind, you'd realize that Kurt was your friend today as he's never been before. What do you mean? What a fool. If he didn't believe there was still something in you worth trying to save, he would have killed you. Killed me? Yes, just as you'll find a way to kill your Zontar. just had an undeserved day of execution. So you agree with him. He finally turned against me all the way. I've done nothing except what I had to do. You're the one that's got to see that for yourself. Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm just a fool. I'm like Kurt. I can't help believing in you. Believing that you'll find yourself. Oh, I love you, Kurt. Oh, the fine man that I married. I can't love a monster. I can't. I won't. Oh. Believe me. We know what we're doing. Yes, I hear you. The town is secure. Zontar, I'm troubled. Maybe you don't have that word in your sphere, but I must see you. Yes, I'll be patient. But Kurt is still at large. He was here and he... Uh... I see. You heard. Then you know he must be controlled. Goodness, you're home. I just had a shower. I'll be right out with you. What happened? Well, first I went downtown. Brad Crenshaw killed Ledford. Then I went over to the lab and found General Young. He was possessed somehow. It's a horrible mess. This whole thing is real, honey. Keith is not crazy. He's frighteningly sane. Man, how come our shower's working? Hmm? It's not. After a while, I felt so sticky, I just had to do something. So I drained the hot water heater, stuck a bucket full of water in the shower window, and used the shampoo hose. Oh. Yes, 
what I've got. What? A present. See you later, darling. I'm going for a walk. When I get back, you'll feel much better. This has got to be Keith. Right. I have the only working phone left. All right, what do you want? I've just talked to Zontar. He said you've killed the injector pod that he grew for you. That means you can't be controlled for several hours. Come on over, I want to talk to you. It's uh, terribly important. How'll I get there? Anne's car will run. All right. I'll come over. But I, I have to do something first. Good. I'll see you later. Yes, he's coming over here later. Yes, if it must be done, but is it imperative? Can't we wait a while? What is it? He said Kurt's mind must not remain free. It's the most dangerous since he's the one enemy who knows basically what he's fighting. And his injectopod is gone. What does that mean? It means Kurt must die. He's too great a menace to live. I must kill him. You came back quickly. I knew it wouldn't take long. All right. Now we must wait for Zonto to give us our instructions. What instructions? for the next step in the conquest of the world. And we'll be like this always? For the rest of our lives. I see Anne. I see God. and wait. We come all the way out here, and what do we do? Nothing. We're supposed to be looking for suspicious actions, remember? What kind of actions? You tell me. I told you, but you wasn't listening. What are you talking about? I told you I saw this funny-looking boy. Boyd. Bird. Will you, forget ab will you forget about that bird already? That's all you've been talking about all day. All right, you guys, what do you think? This is a picnic? You men with the dice, clean them rifles. Never mind the beast, get busy. What are you doing? Closing up shop? Enough murders for one day? Suppose the great Zontau wants you to run down to the corner and tear up a few hearts. What then, master? Suppose the great ruler can't reach you when, with a wave of his hand. Or does he have... That's it? enough, Martha. The little sleigh robot can talk. And it's going to have some music. Isn't it just great having the only working tape deck in the world? Well, we could dance if there wasn't so much blood around. But I'm sure it makes you feel like a big man, Martha. doesn't it? Yes. What I have to do is most difficult, and you're not making it easy, Anne. Oh, I want to make it difficult. I want it to be so difficult you just can't do it. Lean down and open your mind for just a few minutes and let me inside so that I can talk to you. All right, Martha. I'm listening. Tell me about Zontar. What's he 
the old hot springs cave up at the ridge? Yes. Zontar has made his headquarters there because the climate is somewhat like that of Venus. Hiding in a cave, away from the light. Earth must be of no use to him except as a place for conquest. Let me finish. He grows control devices in groups of eight. He sends these to four key people and their wives. Wives? Now, he directs the subjects... And it's been controlled? Uh, yes. There were only three on the list who were not. Kurt and the mayor and his wife. But the mayor and his wife are dead. They were killed in the evacuation. We know. Then why doesn't Zontar use their devices on Kurt? They've already been used. Not on you. No, not on me. Well, you didn't sleep very long. Well, how? How did it happen? What made everything go back on? Don't ask us. It all just started up again. We're checking now to see if everything's in order. Well, what else can happen in one day? Any coffee? No. It's all gone. Well, I think I'll make some. Never mind, Louise. Please. We don't want any coffee. Well, I do, if you don't mind. We tried to keep you from looking in there. What's the matter with you? Now relax, Louise. It will only take a minute. Oh, oh John, are you free? Computer advises that best time for your contact with Venus home base will be. direct this operation. Very well. We shall remain in contact. Why don't you take a walk? You don't have to be here and you'll be safe. After everything I've said, you're still going to go through with it. I must have the courage of my convictions. Zontar is as weak as you are. He's hiding in a cave, forcing humans to do his rotten work. He's afraid of strength. And that means Kurt Taylor. I'm sorry, Doctor. I have to meet Kurt. Listen. You can hear me or not, but if you can, you listen and listen good. I hate your living guts for what you've done to my husband and my world. I know you for the coward you really are. And I'm going to kill you. Did you hear that?
killed her. You killed your wife? She was no longer my wife. She was your wife. You would have been one with her if you hadn't destroyed... Destroyed the thing that was trying to control me? Yes. Why shouldn't I destroy it? Then I should destroy you, too. Go ahead and kill me. What good would it do you? Listen, Pete. You're the only one that can help. You know all about no. Antar. He's been playing you for a sucker. He understood and praised my work. He was using your human emotions, your desires to help your race, your dreams of freedom. He was using these to help him destroy no, the world. No, no. He has no feelings. He has to have someone do that for him. And that someone is you. I've got to have time to think. You do that. You do that. I hear a car. So what? Uh, First car I heard all day. I got better things to worry about, like where are we gonna get rations? I'm hungry too. How about I go rustle up some cattle? I'll be serious. Would you believe chickens? Supposing you're right. I know I'm right. Zontar reasons, concludes, and destroys. Have I reached you? I don't know, Kurt. For the first time, I'm confused. I was supposed to kill you. Santar's orders. Whatever you are, I've come here to kill you. Zantar, you're slimy, horrible. Go on, try to control me. Use your intellect on me. You think you're going to destroy the world. I'll see you in hell first. <laughs> Now 
are you going to help me destroy him? Yes, Kurt. Now, the minute the installation had been possessed by the injector pods, you take care of them. I'm going to the cave. Here, take my gun. Guns won't hurt him, Kurt. But I've got something that will. Something that not even you've seen yet. What's that? I think I communicated with Venus in the first place, Kurt. By a laser principle that not even the government and all its millions have perfected yet. This beam gun contains a plutonium ruby crystal. It's capable of fantastic bursts of power. It'll be enough to blast him apart. It's the only thing on Earth that will. Let's go. monster in a cave. The general didn't say nothing about no monsters. Now pack up, men. We're moving out. This is close enough. Good luck, Chief. on the installation strip. Yes, I've been told. Zon Farr has ordered me to Washington for a meeting with the president and the cabinet. They suspect nothing. You have the explosive? A briefcase full of it. They will all die with you. Hold it. File, people, Raul, drop your packs, fix your bayonets. We're going in. Now the rest of you stay here.
I made it possible for you to come here. I made you welcome to Earth. And you're trying to destroy it. Try to save it. You wouldn't want to see them. Dead? Yeah. Dead, both of them. He acted like he knew that thing. He did. Keith Ritchie came to realize that the loss of his own life, that man is the greatest creature in the universe. He learned that a measure of perfection can only be slowly attained from within ourselves. He sought a different path and found death, fire, disillusionment, loss, war, misery, and suffering have always been with us, and we shall always strive to overcome them. But the answer is to be found from within, not from without. It must come from learning. It must come from the very heart of man himself. <laughs>